Welcome to this Java beginning tutorial on the super keyword. In the last tutorial we dealt with the super keyword and methods and this one we're going to deal with constructors. Okay so I kind of put together uh, some code here and let's just walk through this really quickly. So we're kicking off our new object down here so we got the new keyword and we're going to go ahead and have this constructor get kicked off but we're extending here right you see we're extending so we have a super class that the subclass is the child of. So we come down here and we're going to invoke the supers constructor first. And whether we do that or not, the super constructor always goes first. That's the point I want to make here. And that is very, very critical that you understand that point. The super classes constructor always constructs the super class first. So that's how it works. And then the subclass constructor will do his work to build the subclass. And then they both get merged into the object. The super constructor always gets built first, regardless whether I put this here or not. Now, if I don't put anything here, it's called an implicit super class constructor. But in this case, we want to go ahead and pass these variables through the super class constructor and assign them to the variables over here. So that's exactly what's going on here. Now, I want to point out, you remember I just said the super class constructor always goes first? Well, if I drag this down here, look, we get some IntelliSense because now it thinks, oh, you're trying to go ahead and execute the subclass constructor first. I'm sorry, I can't do that. So that's why it always has to be the first statement in the subclass constructor. So let's go ahead and put that back and we're fine. So again, it calls this and says, I want to pass a three and four over here from these two local variables and pass them into these parentheses and assign them to these variables. And that will get built. This constructor will get built. And then we'll come over here. And now the subclass constructor comes into play. And he goes ahead and assigns these values that we put right here, one and two, to these object variables. And then the object gets built and we can go ahead and print everything out down here. So let's run this. And you can see it worked just fine. And let's go back to the super class over here and let's just get rid of this parameterized constructor. And now we're just using the default constructor right here. And we'll go back here and you see it's giving us IntelliSense because hey, I can't find the parameterized super class constructor, but we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these parameters and now everything's hunky-dory. Okay, so now again, this is a explicit call. We've typed this out, but it is no different. If I actually remove this, it would be an implicit call. So it still gets done. The super class constructor goes ahead and builds his portion of the object. And of course that gets merged into what the subclass constructor builds that we create that we use down here. And I'm gonna go through that in a few minutes again. So let's go ahead and run this thing again and we get one and two. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this and we'll run it again and everything's fine still, okay? Now that was an implicit call. It was still done, it was just done behind the scenes. Now I wanna take a moment and discuss how the object is built in terms of the subclass and the superclass coming together to make the object. When a object is built, like I just said, the super class constructor always gets invoked first, whether we have it here or not, and of course now we don't, and then the subclass goes and does whatever he has to do, and then they are both part of the object now, right? That's inheritance, that's how it all works. So I'll do a little bit of animation here. Let's just assume we're running this and the implicit call is made to the super class, and then we get this little box over here, and that's the first part of the object that gets created. That's Now think of it, that's the object, that's what the super class constructor just did. And then guess what, our subclass constructor comes into play, and that's this red box. And then the object is created, and then of course we can use it in our main. So that's how inheritance works again. So that's how it's all getting built and then we can go ahead and use everything that's in that superclass, right? All its methods and variables, everything that we inherited. Now, let's remove this extends, and you'll see what happens here. Now, this is just a standalone object, right? This is no longer inheriting anything. It's by itself. It's by its little lonesome. And we're no longer, of course, inheriting from this superclass.java that we created. And then we would just be using the standalone objects parameterized constructor. Okay, that's pretty much going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you guys found this useful and I will see you guys in the next one.